Hello everyone, this is Steve with FTR Owners Club. Now that you guys have all had a chance to look at the raw, unedited video of the alpha and beta rides, I thought we'd kind of go over them together and I'd give you my thoughts about being in there that wasn't really um, apparent from the uh, videos. Okay, so before we go any further, I just wanted to make it very clear that I am not officially um, associated with Aptera. So nothing that I say should be taken as official information. Um, this will just be my speculation and just my thoughts. And I'm just a fan, a reservation holder, an investor. Um, and um, I really like Aptera, but I am not part of their company. And you should not hold them accountable for anything that I say. Um, these are my opinions and my opinions alone. Okay, so let's talk about the Alpha vi um, vehicles first. And here's me getting into the Alpha vehicle with Chris helping me get in. Um, if you've seen my ingress and egress video and about the trunk space, the one thing that what became apparent is the way I usually like to get into a car is to put one leg in, then sit down in the seat and then swing the other leg in. And in order to do that, it can be done, but because of the way these butterfly doors are, this part of the door is kind of where my head would be. And so you have to lean your head back a little bit, uh, which if you're not paying attention, you could knock your head on that thing. The, the easier way to go in is to just go up to the side of this and put your butt in first and swing both legs in, which I think um, a lot of people do that anyway and I could easily get used to doing that. One way to do that, and I doubt that they're gonna change this, but if you made these butterfly uh, doors open even wider and veer more to the front, then you could get in the other way. Anyways, it's not very, um, the, the seat is not very low to the ground, so it's pretty easy to get into and out of. I don't think it'll be much of an issue. The thing that I did notice is that uh, this seating position is pretty uh, flat, so, Although the seat is pretty far off the ground, it's um, it's not very far off the floor of the vehicle. The floor of the vehicle is pretty high. So your positioning is, um, when you're sitting down in the thing, is that your seat is pretty close to the floor of the vehicle. So it's not like an SUV or something where you're sitting like more like a chair. It's more reclined. If that's a problem, I don't think that that can change be just because of the geometry of the vehicle. Okay, the other thing I noticed is that um, the solar panels on all the Alpha vehicles are not actual solar panels. They are cosmetic. They don't, uh, they're, they're not, I don't, I'm almost positive they're not functional, that they're here for, um, for to, to look like this and to show an example of what it would look like with functional um, solar panels, but, my my uh, I'm, my impression strongly after seeing the alphas is that the alphas are not solar powered. They they these panels are not actual solar panels and they do not generate um, any electricity. And then Chris did confirm that when they redesigned the beta, they got rid of some of these lights and it freed up more space for more panels. So there's going to be more panels on the production vehicle. Okay, so we're getting in um, the. It, the other thing that you need to know about these alphas is that they are vehicles that were made to look nice and they, they do look beautiful and they look nice and they drive, but they're not anything close to production. The fit and finish is of a prototype vehicle and not a finished vehicle, so it will rattle a lot. And so um, just understand the purpose of the alpha is to look good in PR pictures and in videos as they move, but when you actually ride the thing, um, it rattles because the it just not fit together like a production vehicle would. And we purposely went over speed bumps and things like that, and it, it feels very rattly in the Alpha vehicle, but it, I don't think it's because of the suspension. I think it's just because the body panels just rattle a lot. The other thing that I did mention, and if you if you listen to the video, is that the rear wheel going over a bump, it's almost imperceptible. Like you don't feel it. It's it's much less than in a regular car. In a regular car, when you go over speed bumps, you definitely feel it go over the rear wheels. Um, you almost do not feel it at all in the in the Aptera, and that was true for both the Alpha 
and the beta vehicle. Now you can see the um, wheel well from on your side of the vehicle. So if you're on the driver's side, you can see the uh, wheel pants on the driver's side. You cannot see the wheel pants on the opposite side. Oh, here's the takeoff. This thing takes off extremely fast, very fast. Um, I've been in um, single motor Model S Teslas. It is faster than that, or it feels way faster than that. Um, it feels just as fast as a dual motor uh, Tesla. I don't know if it's because the car is just more rattly and it just makes it feel faster. Sometimes that's the case, but it feels extremely fast. Um, it is, uh, yeah, it feels like a sports car actually. And I, it, it kind of reminded me of, I don't know if you guys have seen those um, videos of uh, supercars where like people don't know what they're doing and they just like lose control of their supercar and their supercar, like the Lamborghini ends up in a ditch. Um, that, I feel like the power to weight ratio in the Aptera is so good that if you don't know what you're doing, you could lose control of this car because it just has that much power for the weight. Because the, it doesn't have that much power, but the weight is so light. It's you know 1,600 pounds, but it's got a lot of torque off the line. So if you're trying to like peel out of a, uh, a red light while making a right turn, I think you could lose control of the car. So I think it's good that um, they detuned the engine a little bit. They said on the beta that it was pretty detuned and the beta felt faster, but not that much faster than the Alpha. And the Alpha was surprisingly fast. Again, these um, solar panels on the dash are not real solar panels. They are, um, they're just like little plastic cutouts. On this video, you can't see images here just because of the way the camera is and you can't really see this well. Um, and the glare looks bad on here. In, in real life, the glare is not noticeable. You can clearly see pictures here uh, on the rear view mirror cameras. The, the, uh, the car felt very planted as it was going over corners. And um, you know, I thought the ride was fine. It's a little stiff. Um, so it's not plush. It won't be like a large vehicle. Um, it feels like a sports car. Um, I, I think that's what I would, uh, um, I would associate with it. it. It feels very much like a sports car, which I personally like, but if someone's looking for a very plush ride, I'm not sure that you're going to get that with the Aptera. The, again, the beta transmission felt much more planted, and, but it did feel stiffer even. And the ballast was out of the beta, so maybe with more weight, it would feel a little uh, more plush, but um, it felt very stiff. It felt very confident in the corners. And um, again, the most surprising thing to me was how little you felt it go over the rear wheel um, when you went over speed bumps and these little dips and things like that. I didn't get a feeling about how tight the turning radius would be. And unfortunately, I didn't think to ask them about that. Um, but I, it just kind of felt like normal, I guess. I don't, I don't, I can't, um, I can't say that it's like the turning radius of a Civic versus a F-150 truck or something, but I, I it, it felt normal. It didn't feel like anything unusual. So Chris is going over um, some changes in the beta about how they made the cab bigger. The other thing you need to notice, uh, know about the Alpha is that there's so many things that are not finalized. Like the seats are the seats in the Alpha are not what the seats are going to be in production. The steering wheel isn't the same thing. The dash is not the same thing. Um, what is the same is like the basic concept of the car is the same. The shape is the same. The the fact they have wheel pants is the same. Um, but a lot of the nitty gritty has not been, uh, finalized. And so people want to know, like, what is the charging plug? Um, what exactly is the seat going to feel like, you know, what exactly is the suspension going to feel like now they did say the suspension is pretty much locked down. They've, they've kind of figured they've uh, fi kind of finalized that. And so he was going over the double trailing link rear suspension. Again, the rear suspension feels great. I think if you went over a pothole in that thing, you would not feel it. Like, um, you, it, it wouldn't make much of a difference. 
the wheel pant design has not been finalized, although it seems like they're very close. And there was a there's a video on this channel going over the wheel pant design. So they're they have several engineers working very carefully on all the subsystems, you know, the cooling system and the suspension system. There's a whole there was a whole unit of people working on the battery packs and they asked me not to film that because I think they're doing some proprietary stuff. And uh, I, I'm sure they're going to release information about that, which I'm looking forward to. But um, there was definitely a bunch of battery work being done, which they asked me not to film because um, I don't think they're quite ready to um, make that public. I suspect it's because of supply chain issues. They don't want to um, tip their hand on their supply chain and who their suppliers are going to be just in case they're in talks with other suppliers who uh, might, they might get a better deal from them and they don't want to tip their hand about what they're talking about. Anyways, they're doing a lot of work and they're finalizing um, all these things about their subsystems. This is uh, Chris talking about how much deeper the well is going to be. The, the, the trunk space is very long. It's like seven and a half feet, I think, or fairly close to seven and a half feet. Um, I'm 5'11". I have plenty of space to lay down. Um, when you, when you put the thing forward, I have at least a, like a foot above my head before I hit the end. And they said the beta is going to be four inches longer. So at least a foot and four inches, uh, no problem. You can see here that the seats sit pretty close to the floor pan. Uh, those seats are obviously not the production seats, not anywhere close. These are just like random racing car seats that they found that they strapped in there on the beta of course this beta mule is just mainly to check out braking and suspension um things and they did say that they're gonna that, that this is pretty finalized but there's a lot of things that are not finalized so i think there's a i you see a lot of people comment putting in the comments about like what's this going to be what's that going to be the reason that we don't that uh aptera doesn't give the answers is because they haven't finalized it. I think they have a good idea what they want, and I think they're talking to their suppliers and trying to see what they got, they can get and what compromises they need to make to make the supply chain work well for them and to make it hit their price point. But they haven't, uh, they haven't finalized it, and that's why we don't have answers about that. Um, so, yeah, he's talking more about it. Let's skip ahead a little bit. Okay, so I had to put the racing harness on, which um, wasn't used to. I've not never used a four-point harness before, so uh, Daniel's helping me to clip that in. So this thing is a, you know, an all-wheel drive. They had this big giant thing in the front, so you can't put your feet in there. Uh, there was plenty of headroom in here. Now there's going to be some interior trim, which takes up less of the less of the headroom. But um, there was uh, plenty of headspace. You know, it looks like about five, six inches of headspace between here. This roll bar obviously wouldn't be in the uh, patrol vehicle. Yeah, uh, I think four, four or five inches maybe. Um, and then these seats are much taller than the production seats. So I suspect that there is about five, six inches of headroom for me. And I'm 5'11", so you can kind of figure out what that's going to be. Of course, those are just very approximate numbers. So, you know, that, that, that may not be uh, exactly what it turns out to be. So Daniel's getting strapped in here. Uh, what else can we say about these vehicles? Okay, that this is the actual uh, honeycomb sandwich uh, construction. I did ask them about hemp being in the vehicle. That has not. Uh, that's one of the things that has not been finalized. Sounds like they're still looking into that as a possibility. I don't know that it's a huge priority for them, and I don't know that it needs to be a huge priority. But um, they haven't. They haven't said yes or no about the hemp in the vehicle. Again, these this transmission, this uh, suspension felt very good, very planted, very solid. Um, it felt really stiff, like a sports car. Um, but I think some of the ballast is out. So it, I think it'll be a little bit of a plusher ride. See, you, you see that like the bump was more significant there. And I think it is because partially, um, the ballast is out of this vehicle and it's pretty light. This vehicle is very detuned according to Daniel. They've, they've scaled back the power. And I think that's a good thing. Um, you, 
I, I just think with all wheel drive, this thing will launch so hard that unless you have like good traction control, that it'll be pretty easy to lose control of this thing. If, if, if you just unleash full power on this thing. Yes, it's very, very, very fast. Um, one of the fastest cars I've been in. Of course, I've never been in a Lamborghini or a Bugatti or anything. I've never been in a supercar, so my frame of reference isn't isn't that great um, in terms of that. And you can see that, um, yeah, so you, going over that again, suspension is stiff. I personally liked it. I like a stiff suspension. I don't like a plush kind of rolly kind of ride. There's very little body roll. Uh, probably because of the anti-sway bar, but it feels, uh, oh, there's, I didn't notice there's a guy on a bike going by. I did try to ask who rides a bike to work because there was a bicycle in a lot of their early videos. And I guess a lot of the guys ride a bike to work, which I'm a big supporter of because I ride a bike to work as well. But I kind of wanted to meet the guy that um, rides the bike to work. Um, but I guess there were there was a lot of them. Yeah, I can't believe I missed that guy on a, on a, I guess I was too focused on filming and talking to Daniel. So overall, I came away very impressed with the performance of the car in terms of uh, acceleration and in terms of how planted it felt. Um, the and how it, it just felt like a really good solid suspension. It 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 is a little stiff. And I don't know with all the ballast in if that's, that's if that's how it's going to be. But you'll see us going over these bumps there. Yeah, the the it, the suspension is not so compliant that it just absorbs those things and you don't feel it. You definitely feel these speed bumps for sure. Now the rear wheel going to the speed bumps, you hardly feel that at all. On smooth roads, it felt completely fine. Uh, no problem whatsoever and everything feels tighter in the in the beta probably because it just doesn't have the body panels to rattle around so i i think a lot of the questions that we have about certain parts just aren't going to be answered until they have a production ready vehicle and until their supply chain is locked down that is supposed to happen towards the end of the summer. And just from talking to the, um, the people at Aptera, they still seemed very confident that they were on track, which uh, gives me a good feeling. But they, they felt like um, I got the impression that things were going very well and almost better than they expected that a lot of the people that they reached out for to get parts were very enthusiastic with working with them and that they are getting their supply chain um it, like it, it was working out well for them so i think they're still on track and they had a lot of engineers working on the different sub components and they're still hiring people it looks like and what i think is happening at this point is they're just ironing out the minor details about all the things once they get that um, cemented they're going to find a supplier that they think that they can um, get the uh, get the supply chain good for and then they'll get the prototypes from the supply chain and they'll make a, pro a production ready prototype at the end of the summer so i told them that i would like to come back at the end of the summer when they have a production ready vehicle at that point a lot of our questions will be answered and we'll kind of have a very good idea of what the actual production Aptera is going to look like. And you can see here in this preview in the beta, you, they, you see this, the um, light doesn't go as far back. So they added like, they can add like two more um, panels on each side to that front area. But anyways, um, we're all very um, anxious to get full uh, information, but we're just gonna have to be patient. They're working things out. And we're not going to get uh, final specs until the end of the summer. I'm thinking late July, maybe around then. Anyways, when that happens, I'm 100% going back down there 
and we'll shoot a bunch more footage. Until then, I don't think it's um, worth visiting them again. Uh, they're 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 gonna. I think they've moved into their their new production facility, but not much is happening there. You know, they're just kind of slowly setting up stuff. I don't think anything will be really set up until that thing's gonna be built out. I think after they get their production ready vehicle, so they're gonna be building out that thing in you know early fall, and then hopefully by winter uh, they'll start piecing together the, their first you know vehicle that they deliver, and. I'm. They seem pretty confident they're going to deliver a vehicle by by the end of this year. I think if everything works out perfectly, they'll be able to do that. Um, you know wh wh what things in life work out perfectly. Um, I'd be I'd be happily surprised if they released a vehicle by the end of this year. Um, but I wouldn't be too surprised if it gets pushed back into like early 2023, and I wouldn't be I wouldn't be disappointed by that. From what I saw. Uh, they are making good progress, and they do seem very confident about their timeline. So hopefully um, they can deliver. Okay, so before I forget, I want to um, thank all the people that have uh, joined the the channel to sponsor it. I really appreciate them. Um, Paul Rebarchik was the very first one. He signed up right away. And then uh, followed by Dan Fitzsimmons and Orca, Harry Hawk, Alan Brim, Paul Evans, Tom Bush, Bushall, Jaron Harding, Hans Torgerson, uh, Michael Brammel, Joshua, and Abby. And then of those, Jaron, Paul, Harry, and Paul Ree are the 40 kilowatt members. So thank you so much for your support. And um, thanks for watching, everyone. Have a great day.